There are lots of batch processing systems or frameworks which are available in the market. In this video, we are going to see one of the open source framework which is useful for batch processing. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. Spring Batch is one of the open source framework which is useful for batch processing. Lots of enterprise applications are using Spring Batch for creating robust batch processing systems which are very lightweight and which are POJO based since these are based on the Spring framework. It also provides reusable functions which are useful for processing large volume of records or data. It also includes lots of other features like logging, tracing, transaction management, job processing statistics, restarting these jobs whenever we need, skipping messages inside the batch and also finally resource management. Let's see how does a spring batch architecture look like. Consider that there is a scheduler which is running inside our JVM which is going to trigger our spring batch processing workflow. So we can call this particular trigger as a scheduler. In general, we can use the spring schedulers or you can use the quad schedulers. But I, let's consider it as a scheduler for now because in this video, we are going to see only the architecture diagram. In the next video, we will see how to implement this spring batch with an example. So the trigger point for the spring batch processor could be a scheduler. In this case, I'm just considering it as a scheduler. The scheduler triggers something called as a job launcher. So job launcher is nothing but a class inside the spring batch framework. The job launcher is the starting point for any particular job to be started inside the spring batch framework. The job launcher immediately triggers something called as a job repository. This job repository holds all the statistical informations of how many batches were run, what were the status of the each batch, how many messages were processed, how many were skipped, etc. Once the job launcher has triggered a job repository, the job launcher also has something called as a job registered with this particular job launcher. And this particular job can have a step. A step basically consists of three different components inside the Spring Framework. Each of these are called the item reader, item processor and the item writer. All these are useful when you want to read something from a particular source, process that particular message or record and then write it back to some other source. Most of the time these sources are either database or file system or any queuing system. So you can take a typical example of reading a file. Let's say there is a file which is going to be our item reader. So we will be reading the file using the item reader. We will process the data inside that particular file. Basically, each record can be now converted into a POJO or it can be transformed into some other object using the item processor. And finally, using the item writer, we can write it back to the database or you can just publish that to a queue. So this is a single step process. There can be multiple steps inside a job. So you can configure multiple steps inside a particular job. So similar to the first step, the second step also has a similar set of implementation. You can have a reader, you can have a processor and the writer. All these are one on one. There could be multiple steps, but each the item reader, processor and the writer is only one instance per step. All these are enclosed with something called as a step execution. All these happen within the step execution. The job execution happens at the job level. So if there are multiple steps inside a job, that is considered as a whole as a job execution and each step has its own step execution. Once all the jobs are completed or once the steps are completed, the steps status is now updated back into the job repository and you can also get some statistics on how many messages were read, how many were processed and how many were like failed or skipped etc. This is how a spring batch framework or an architecture look like. In the next video, we will see how to use Spring Batch inside a Spring Boot application. 
If you want me to make any specific example of Spring Batch, do let me know in the comment section below. In the next video, we can see how to implement a Spring Batch framework inside the Spring Boot application.